And to begin the next session on uh, resolutions, it's loan regulation to be moved by Douglas Thompson from Edinburgh to be seconded by Christine Graham, MSP. Doug Thompson. Thanks, Derek. Doug Thompson, Edinburgh Newington. Payday lending, I've been asked what it actually is, and thankfully that means at least some of you haven't been sucked into the dreadful downward spiral. You'll know what it is when I say that payday loan companies are loan sharks, officially encouraged and licensed by Westminster, authorised to be the scourge of our poorest communities and the menacing shadow that hangs over tens of thousands of impoverished Scots. As they not only work out which bills they can just manage to pay this month, but quite literally how they're going to survive. Conference, let's be clear, you don't choose to go to these people. You've been backed into a corner and you have no choice as to how you pay for some electricity or not, or give your, food, your kids some food tonight or not. The bottom line is that you, it's a huge industry. It's developed in recent years, providing finance to those who have nowhere left to go. Payday lenders, pawnbrokers, home credit providers and rent-to-buy firms, they all use the same techniques of targeting the most vulnerable in society with the highest cost of borrowing imaginable. You get stunned the moment you sign up. You pay a fee to borrow a sum of money for a fixed, relatively short period of time. And then your problems start. The cost would be comical if it wasn't so serious. The APR, the annual rate of interest, believe it or not, is into the high thousands of percent. Every one of our high streets now has a plethora of these loan shops. It doesn't just stop there, though. I've got an app here on my mobile phone. It means you're never too far away from a loan you desperately need, but absolutely cannot afford. Now, here's how it works. I borrow £250 to cover me to the end of the month. Have a guess at how much I pay for that privilege. £61.53. That's right, 60 quid to borrow 250 for three weeks. Of course, going online gets the money to you within 15 minutes. Then they take the money from your debit card at the month end and penalties mount up if you fail to deliver. If the full amount is unavailable, then they'll keep trying with small amounts until every single penny is drained from that account. It's nothing short of an absolute scandal. Do we really live in a Scotland where this sort of stuff not only goes on, but the coalition government turns a blind eye to? That's right, in its wisdom, Westminster has reserved control over the regulation of consumer credit through the OFT. So what can we do about this? Well, there's a lot happening, and we need to really get your help to get traction behind outlawing the excesses of this poorly regulated market. Our MSP Margaret Burgess brought this to public attention with our members' debate in the Parliament in January. So awareness is increasing. Well, credit unions are part of the solution with increasing membership across Scotland. They do remain small, however, but with around 130 across Scotland, with our continued support, they will increase in importance too and in providing support for often neglected communities. The beauty of credit unions, of course, is the discipline of saving. No fractional reserve banking here. What they take in deposits, they can lend out. It has to balance. Financial literacy and awareness remain pitifully low amongst the groups that payday lenders target. The convenience of borrowing is more important than the actual interest rate charged. We need to do more in this area, and we are. Embedded within the new curriculum for excellence will be numeracy for life skills, which will hopefully ensure some protection for the next generation. Now, there are amendments to the resolution, and I have no problem accepting them. They show the wide level of concern that fellow delegates share about this issue and the damage being done to their communities. So let's keep the momentum going. The OFT announced belatedly last week that it's launching an investigation into payday lending. They obviously got wind that we were going to discuss at our conference. Now, we know a thing or two ourselves about consultation exercises, so let's get to work on this one. The deadline for submissions is the 18th of May. So for all our council candidates out there, you'll have two weeks after taking control of every council in Scotland to get those submissions in. Target your MP, tell them your concerns, and demand action from them. Demand that we introduce a cap on the rates that can be legitimately charged. That's already been introduced in several European countries. Or how about individual councils investigating using bylaws or planning restrictions? Or as Bishop Briggs Branch has put in their amendment, give us the power through the Scotland Bill and we'll get it sorted out ourselves. Or tell you what, we took on the supermarket giants to fund preventative spending and we won. So come on, Mr Swinney, let's take on the cowboys of payday lending and impose levies on those found to be in clear breach of fair trade. 
These Westminster endorsed loan sharks have no place in our modern Scotland. Thank you, Conference. Christine Graham to be followed by Bob Scott from Bishop Briggs who will move Amendment A. Uh, good afternoon, Conference. I want to focus on credit unions. I myself am a member of the Capital Credit Union, which covers Lothians and the Borders. But I, I have to admit that when I joined it 12 years ago, I had no idea what a credit union was. And I think there may very well be people in this hall who don't quite know what a credit union is. And I like to give the Tesco test to people when I'm in my surgeries in Tesco supermarkets, and many of them don't know what a credit union is. And, it's a great wee thing. You put your money in and other people borrow it out. And, and there's no big bankers involved in it. So I really think we need a name change because it's really not to do with credit. It's to do with saving. And it isn't to do with the Labour Party and unions. It's to do with trust. I was just thinking of a name for it. Perhaps we could call it something like, like um, savings and trustees. Like trustees savings bank. <laughs> uh, that, that seems... A good name for me. I, I seem to remember we did have banks like that. They were mutual. I have no idea what fractional banking is, whatever that was that you said there. But I do remember when people put money in the banks so other people they get decent interest on their savings and other people borrowed it. It was people's banks for people's, not people paying for banks for bankers' bonuses. Wouldn't that be a change? So uh, let's say when we're independent, we return to the form of banking in my parents' days, which was so much better for everybody in society. Credit unions, rename them. Bob Scott will move Amendment A. Can I have a seconder from the floor for Amendment A, please? Thank you. Bob Scott will be followed by Monroe Ross to move Amendment B. I think the case for the abolition of these loan charts has been beautifully presented to this conference already. I don't think I can equal that. Except to point out that earlier this morning, just as one does before one comes. I went on to one of these sites, probably the best known, wonga.com, and I was playing around with the sliders that these three lovely little puppets always encourage you to do. And I found out that if I needed £200 for the rest of the fortnight, it was going to cost me £233 within inside 10 days. This amounts to £1,070 a year, which is a, a rate of 800%. Yet under their own standards, the figures given when you go on, and must admit they've had to increase the print size, the APR is 4,214%. Now, usury used to be a crime in this country, and it's always been a moral crime. We used to think the loan sharks in Glasgow were bad. They're nothing to these loan sharks in London. These... <laughs> this, this body, they've even got their own trade association, the Financial Lending Association. Well, I know what I would do with that. I would finish it up. They are the worst bunch of unregulated fools we've ever had to deal with. We're proposing this because the Consumer Credit Act is the one thing that governs this. This power should be in Scotland. It should give us the power to finish these people off and make people a far more prosperous. Let's not hit our vulnerable. Let's help them. We back the idea of credit unions as well. I urge you to vote for this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And I'd invite uh, Monroe Ross to come forward and also can have a seconder for this amendment. Okay, thank you. Monroe Ross, elected member. Thanks, convener. 
Uh, so, some of the things I was going to say have been said, but I just want to highlight a couple of things. And actually, I only noticed this five minutes ago, or, or thereabouts, that there's actually a typographical error. The 8,000 percent can actually read 800,000 pounds percent. And that's because that can come about because if you go a few pennies over in your draft, with some banks, they charge you flat rate fees on a daily basis. And that's how it builds up and up and up. Um, but I really want, I want to address the main remarks to start highlighting some of this credit unions. Anyone can join a credit, as you said. Credit unions, you put some money in and you get some money out. They have a maximum legally enforceable limit of, of um, rate of interest, which is 2%, which is about 26.8%. Highland Council have joined forces with Comrade Yelena, I'm sure I've got that pronounced wrong, so I'll have heard it in the Western Isles Council. Uh, and since 2006, They've now got over 2,000 members within the community, and they've seen two and a half million pounds worth of low-cost loans issues. And that's a really good way of helping folk. They've, they've had regular stalls in, in the council chambers, and I must confess, I really keep meaning to get around and joining them uh, and follow Christine's excellent example of doing that. We need to do that. They say they're flexible and convenient loans. If you put money in, you can get them out. The quality services and no fees, and the, the saving, your, your savings with them get paid um, dividends as well. And then, as I say, it's an easy thing to do. If you've not got, not got one in your council area, councillors, can I, I urge you to make it a priority when you take control on the 4th of May to set one up in your area. If you've got one like Highlands and West Niles and other, other councils, then publicise it throughout and use it as a campaigning tool in the local elections to highlight how we can really make a difference to people who are struggling with their finances. So I urge you to support the motion and the amendments. I now would like to call Margaret Burgess, MSP, to be followed by Mark MacDonald, MSP. Both to speak in favour of the resolution and in the Scottish Parliament, Margaret held a member's debate on the subject. Margaret Burgess, MSP. Thank you. I think I'd like to start with just reminding ourselves what we're talking about here when we're talking about these uh, high interest loan companies. We're talking about a business of 1.9 billion within the UK. That's a huge amount of money that these companies uh, are involved in. And these companies don't want to be regulated. And the reason they don't want to be regulated is because their profit margin will drop. And we know that because they were regulated in America and in Canada and in parts of Europe and they moved away because they couldn't make their profit. They've moved here to the UK where there was no regulation whatsoever by the UK government, albeit that the government knew the reason why they'd come here, because they were getting regulated in America. But that didn't stop the UK allowing them to move in and proliferate and be in every one of our towns and high streets and online and we saw earlier the first speaker showed us the app where you can just be sitting there with an app and get a loan it looks simple but the consequences of it are severe and i think we have to realize why are they regulated i think we've got to understand it they're regulated they need to be regulated because 70 percent of those who take out a loan can't pay it back because of the high interest levels the loans are rolled over time and time again, just carrying on month after month after month after month uh, with no possibility of the lender paying it back. The borrowers are then turning to other loan companies to borrow um, to pay back their first loan, getting them into a further spiral of debt. And the high, the high interest lenders target, as we know, the vulnerable and the, the lower income and minority groups. There are all good reasons why these companies should be regulated and it's a disgrace that they've been allowed to carry on unregulated. We've got evidence from Citizens Advice, from Consumer Focus, and from other frontline organisations telling us these exact same problems are happening here in Scotland, uh, the problems that they had in Canada and America, and we can't allow it to continue. Regulation is needed and needed now. And at this point, I would say, we've heard it's a reserved matter, but the Scottish Government has done more to try and address this than the UK Government has done since 2003. 
Fergus Ewing, our minister, has been trying actively to look at ways that within the powers that the Scottish Parliament has that we can do something about these loan companies. And I think that shows a lot of what would happen in Scotland uh, if we were an independent country. We wouldn't be in this position. But I want to make a final um, kind of comment on this, why it is so important. We're soon going to be faced with welfare reform. Welfare reform is going to put a lot of our citizens into um, poverty, into struggling to, to, to get money, to, to get through to the end of the month. And I'm very concerned that people turn to those high interest lenders to get them out of their problem. It is not going to help. And we've got to do everything we can as elected members, as councillors, as just active members of the party to highlight the problems of payday loan companies. So I think the regulation has got to be more than capping the high interest. I think that's one part of it. We also have to limit the number of times people a loan can roll over. We have to take, loan companies have to take account of the borrower's ability to pay because at the moment it doesn't matter, they don't check, just get the loan out. So that has to be addressed. And also we have to ensure that when it's clear that someone's in financial difficulties, they're getting the right support and help uh, by good advice services and we've got to make sure that they're there and available for them. But somebody mentioned earlier about loan sharks, and I think one of the, the things about the, the way they collect the payments from these loan companies we haven't looked deep enough at, they're generally used what is called a continuous payment authority, and that allows the lender to go in time and time again to the borrower's bank account or credit card account, as we heard, once a month, twice a month, three times a month, to take the money as bits and bobs, no matter whether money's in that account and that's incurring bank charges for the borrower. Those continuous loan authorities cannot be stopped by the borrower. Only the lender can stop it. And we've got to look at that. That, to me, is the same as a loan shark standing outside the post office waiting on the person coming out with their benefit and taking the money from them. This is just a more sophisticated way of doing it. It is loan sharking. We've got to address it. It's got to stop. And we must promote credit unions and other ways of affordable borrowing for our citizens. That's time, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker is Mark MacDonald, MSP. And I love the way when I said to Margaret, that's your time up. Instead of keeping the speech shorter, she ran off the stage. <laughs> Thank you. Mark MacDonald, MSP. Aye, there'll be no running from me, convener. Um, can, can I say, conference, uh, I think we would all be agreed that the banking sector requires to be reformed and appropriately regulated. But just for avoidance of doubt, that doesn't mean carving up the Royal Bank of Scotland and putting Scottish jobs at risk. So, Mr. Cable, please think again on that one. Um, but, Conference, I think one of the things is that... Um, I think one of the important things to highlight is to contrast the zeal with which the London-based parties will attack the banks and the bankers and the banking sector compared with their deafening silence on these legalised loan sharks and their activities which are doing infinitely more damage to vulnerable families and vulnerable individuals, a point highlighted, I think, extremely well by my colleague Margaret Burgess. And I want to pay tribute to the work that Margaret is doing on this in the Parliament. I think it is fantastic that we have somebody like Margaret in the Parliament standing up and taking these companies to task for what they are doing. And, and I have experienced both from my, my, my time as a councillor as well as now as an MSP, it's not just the apps, it's not just uh, the adverts on the telly, there are actually companies going out there and leafleting in our vulnerable communities, delivering leaflets, particularly around Christmas time, advising people that, you know, our, thing, uh, our budget's a bit tight, would you like a bit of extra money in the run-up to Christmas, offering to secure them a loan, not giving them the, the full facts around how much it's actually going to cost them. It is a reprehensible conference that in a civilised society such behaviour is allowed to go unchecked. Now, the London parties often tell us uh, and tell the world that we do nothing but come here and moan about what they do, as if. But a simple message to them, if you don't want us to moan, do something about it.